Hello and welcome back to Formula One 2019 on the Tom FM channel. And today we have got the German Grand Prix coming up. Hopefully it's going to be as exciting as it was in real life. After winning the British Grand Prix last time out, we are currently sitting third in the driver's standings, 34 points behind Lewis Hamilton and 26 points behind Charles Leclerc. So not too far away. We're still pretty close and we're gaining on them, which is really good. Hopefully another really positive result here in Germany will close that gap even further. We're starting to make a bit of ground as well in the constructor standings after the Red Bull 1-2 last time out in Britain. We have closed the gap on Ferrari and Mercedes, although we are still quite a long way behind them. So maybe come the end of the season, with some more results we might be able to catch them up a little bit but right now it's not looking likely heading into today's race we were expecting an engine upgrade unfortunately that has failed so no engine upgrades for this race we have got the chassis improvements coming for belgium next time around hopefully that doesn't fail hopefully that one will be a good one for us but a disappointment to have the engine fail but we are still the best car on the grid as things stand right now although mercedes are getting a little bit closer to us as we enter into qualifying we need to look a little bit at the weekend structure and ai driver level so starting off we're going to move the ai driver level up you've sort of said it in the comment section that we need to move it up a little bit a few of you said back to 100 we started off on 100 and it just didn't work out very well at all so uh, we we took it down from 100 to 85 i think i'm going to bump it up to i don't know if it makes it i don't want to bump it to 100 because i just feel like that's going to be too hard again so I want to try and do it a bit slowly. So we're going to bump it up like halfway in between. 92, that seems okay. If we can, you know, win here today, we can bump to 100 next time. But slow increments, I think, is the best way to do it. In terms of rules and corner cutting, things like that, it's all, all the rules and flags are on and all the corner cutting is on regular and things like that. Strict, I mean, I feel like regular is just the way to have it. It's regular. I don't know. Maybe move it to strict. I'll let you guys decide in the comment section. But a few of you had said, try and make the rules a bit more harsh on you. But really... I can't. They're on, they're on as nearly as harsh as they can be, to be fair. A few of you had said in previous videos that I am cutting corners a little bit, and I am in some cases, but if the rules allow it on regular, which I think is what they do in real life, I could be completely wrong with that. I don't really know if it actually has any correlation to real life or not. But personally, I think that's all right. So as we head into qualifying, we're going to change the setup a little bit, I think. Uh, if we go into car setup, we're going to just go for increased top speed slightly. Not too much because there's quite a few twisty turns in sector three. So we still want some downforce, but I think we do need the increased top speed down the straight. So that's going to really help us out, I reckon. As ever, we're leaving it pretty late in qualifying to make sure we get our qualifying laps in. We need to be a 114.2 basically right now of a Danny Kvyat. So hopefully we get that in the bag. So as we come across the line to start our flying lap here in Hockenheim, coming past all the grandstands it's such a shame that this just isn't going to be on the new game it's not going to be the next year of formula one it's not got a contract for 2020 which is a real shame considering that some really rubbish tracks do we're going to miss a lot of great racing here in hockenheim in the future also i'm aware i massively cut turn one minute i didn't mean to do it it was a complete accident as we come around this massive hairpin which is probably one of the focal points of hockenheim and you get some great overtakes on that part of the track as we come around the final turns of the very, very narrow Sector 3 here in Hockenheim. Are we going to be able to beat that 114.2? We crossed the line, actually, and it was a... I think it was a 113, 113.5, which actually is quite far off for Stappen in first. Temporarily, though, puts us in sixth, which I'm happy with for now. It gets us into Q2, at least. As we go into Q2, I'm very tempted to go on the medium tyres again, like we did in Britain, which worked out really well for our strategy. However, as we've up the difficulty... I'm not quite sure it's going to be that easy to get into Q3. Currently, we need to beat a 113.9, which we can beat. We know we can beat that. We did that, obviously, in Q1. But I think to do it, we need the soft tyres rather than the medium tyres. So, on the soft tyres, we go for Q2. And I cross the line to start a hot lap on Q2. This time, making a bit of a better, <laughs> better take on uh, Turn 1 there. Not cutting the corner quite as much there, which is quite good, obviously. But I'm hoping that we can get ourselves into the top 10 shootout. I'm not sure we'll be able to get on pole because the difficulty's been increasing. We've not really been close for times that the front runners have been setting. But if we can get close to it, I'm happy with it and we can always get some good overtakes done on the straight in the race. Hockenheim, of course, this track has changed shape and guise in the different years. Personally, I prefer the old layout of the old track when it used to go all the way through the forest. And basically, I think it was a big oval with a couple of chicanes in it. That's kind of what I remember it. It's a long time since I've played the old F1 games where it had that kind of layout in there. But the old Sector 3 is still the same. And it's one of the worst sectors, I think, in all of Formula 1. because It's just so narrow. You can't get overtakes done here. So unless you're in first position, it's really, really frustrating to race on this part of the track. But as we come around the penultimate corners and the final one now, are we going to be able to get into the top 10 as we cross the line? 
in seventh, which isn't guaranteed, is it? I take first corner there, really wide, so already we're down by a second on this lap. We've got two minutes. We can get another lap in. I don't think we need to. I'm going to return to the garage. Luckily, it keeps us in seventh, and we're progressing into Q3 in a shot for pole, but we've got to make up an awful lot of time to get anywhere near pole position. So in Q3, pole is currently set by Lewis Hamilton, our rival, on a 112.5. That is a really fast time that we need to beat. Can we do it? Quite frankly, I'm not too sure, and I'm not really that confident that we can beat it. We're going to have to try our hardest, though, to do it. I don't know if I've got the setup slightly wrong, maybe. Perhaps I've... I don't, know if, I don't know if we've got too much downforce or not enough downforce. This is what I'm a little bit concerned about now. I'm not quite sure how I've really assessed the setup. Maybe I've got it all wrong. I just don't know. As we cross the sector line here, though, we are 0.46 seconds down. That was a poor corner from me as well. We're not getting pole position on this lap, but we have got another go after this, obviously. So we cross the line then on this lap. Eighth fastest, which isn't good enough. So we need to go... A lot faster now. We've already been given a warning for exceeding track limits there, but we've not had our lap time taken off us, which is good, as we are 0.2 seconds up on it, which, I mean, any improvement is going to be good improvement, obviously. We need to do... And that's a, that's a purple sector one, apparently. Four. Okay, exceeding the track limits there. We got the warning for it, but the time hasn't been disqualified for it. So we have gained an advantage there, but our time's not been disqualified. So I feel like it's kind of okay, maybe, but... We're on a very, very fast lap now. I kind of want to concentrate, but I kind of want to talk to you. I don't quite know what to do as we break a little late and heavy here, but I think we hit the apex perfectly. We're on a real flying lap here this time round. No exceeding of the track limits there. How we're looking on sector two, we're not purple sector two. We're only green sector two. I mean, we'll take green, but I prefer purple, obviously. Sector 3, we need to nail this one now. Come on, car. We know you can do it. We know you've got the space. We know you're the fastest car on the grid. You can do it, lads. Come on. Around the final corner where we've not really taken it perfectly. We've lost some time there, definitely. Open the wing. It's not going to be pole position, but it's it's 8th still. Oh. Um. Okay. Oh. Well, <sighs> I guess we didn't improve there, did we? That was... We've been out-qualified by a Sauber, really. I mean, that says everything, really, doesn't it? Out-qualified by Kimi Raikkonen in his Alfa Romeo, not his Sauber anymore. Ninth in the end. 1.4 seconds off pole. 92 difficulty is very hard. I want to turn it back down again. Ah. Oh. That's annoying. Well, we've got a lot of overtaking to do on the opening few laps of this race. Strategy-wise, this is what we're meant to be doing. Five laps on the softs, 12 laps on the mediums. Now, do we, do we try and stop earlier? What happens if we stop earlier? Let's see if we can ed edit this. If we stop earlier, we're losing a bit... Not, not massive time, really. If we go a bit longer... It's, it's negligible, really, isn't it? I think I think we just leave it as it is for now. We decide when we want to go in the pit. So long as it's not near Verstappen, it should be okay. I've also just had to restart the race because we lined up on the grid and we're sixth on the grid, not eighth. And I was very confused by this and then I forgot to start, basically. So I just thought I'd restart and get, just get to the bottom of this. I think, basically, going to the back of the grid. I'm not quite sure why. Well, I don't know why Kimi Raikkonen, he finished ahead of us, but he's now on P16. He must have had a, a 10 place grid penalty. I guess someone else must have as well for, for changing engine parts or something in between qualifying. That must be the thing to do with it. I don't know. Either way, we've been promoted sixth already. So already two overtakes and we've not even started the race yet, which I'm really pleased with. Either way, we're on the grid now, concentrating, ready to start. Five red lights. Immediately, we need to move over to the left-hand side of the track to cover off the McLaren of Lando Norris and get the good racing line into turn one. Avoiding going into the back of Max Weber as well. That would be quite nice as we try and get some slipstream on him. Verstappen is also maybe diving down the inside. We go slightly over the grass there, but we gave enough room to Weber. He manages to keep position though. There's a bit of front wing flying off in front of us there. It could have been Charles Leclerc's front wing. He's dropping back a little bit. We're in the slipstream of Weber, but we're not really in the ideal position on track. Now we are. Now that Weber's moved over, we go down the outside of all these cars. Can we get around the outside? Have we actually just overtaken three cars there? We've overtaken two. Verstappen gets ahead of us just. That could have been an amazing overtake. Over the grass there a little bit to avoid Max Verstappen as he breaks in front of us and causes us to break quite a bit. Again, 
I've told you I'm trying not to cut corners and go up a track and already there's me exceeding track limits once again. <laughs> Apologies, it's a little bit hard on the controller rather than being on a wheel. But I am trying hard as we're up into fourth place already, which I'm really pleased with. It must have been Leclerc who had some front wing dropping off his car. We saw there on turn one. I'll try and zoom in on it in editing. Uh, obviously we've seen that already if that was the case, but that's what I saw at least. And the cars in front of us, clearly they have quite a big traction advantage over us. Or I just can't get that final penultimate corner right because I just keep missing it completely. And these guys seem to be going quite fast through it and making some time on us. So we need to sort that one out. But a good opening lap of the race. We just need to chase down these top three. As we head up the main straight though, on lap three now, you can see the, the front three are getting ahead of us. And actually, Charles Leclerc is going for the overtake on us down the outside like we did on him on lap one. We seem to cover him off quite nicely though there. We get the move done, fourth and wide a little bit, but it's our racing line. We were still ahead of him just about, I think, going into the corner. We had the inside line as well, but it's not a good sign that we're being caught up and the cars ahead of us are getting away from us. I don't like that. I've gone awfully wrong there on those corners. And it's opened the door to Weber now, who's got ahead of Charles Leclerc. Oh, dear me, lads. Open the difficulty has not been a good, a good option for me, really. I'm not a fan of this. The good thing for us is that the, the front three seem to be battling with each other. And I think that's going to slow them down a little bit. But we need to respond to them making changes in the pits. Or we try and go for the undercut and... Going under us, basically, is Max Weber. He's managed to get the uh, the move done on us down the inside of that corner. We have to get him back now, obviously. We need to try and go down the inside ourselves on this corner. We go very deep because of it. And we get the move done, actually. We covered him off a little bit. There could have been a slight bit of contact. I don't think there was. There could have been a slight bit of contact. But we get the move done. And the Weber is now under attack from a McLaren. Behind us, it's all action. In front of us, it's all action. We are kind of in it. We're not really in it. We're sort of defending a little bit and not really doing enough tacking, which is not good enough. So I'm meant to be pitting on this lap, lap five. So we are going to go up to the rich fuel mix to see if that makes a difference. See if we can go a little bit faster as we've got a slow moving Vettel in front of us. Maybe his tyres are going off a little bit, but he's lost ground to the front too. And we're catching up a little bit too because we were 2.4 seconds down. We're now only 1.6 seconds down. As the car behind us, Carlos Sainz, has DRS on us. That's how, obviously, Baby got past us. He had DRS. We have the racing line, though, going around the corner. Are we going to get the better traction, or is Carlos Sainz going to get it? Carlos Sainz gets it, and again, we've been done in the hairpin. This time, we're going to go for the exact same manoeuvre again. I've gone over the grass massively. I, did, I, can't, I can't even defend that one. I didn't, I didn't mean to do it. I just did it, all right? It's just like a natural racing... In, I, I, I'm sorry. I'll hand it back if you want me to. I won't hand it. I'll, no, I can't. Either way, we are getting closer to Vettel. Now, is he going to pit? Because I think we're faster than him on these tyres. If he pits, we stay out. If he doesn't pit, we pit, maybe. He's staying out. We're pitting. We're going for it, then. We're going for the undercut on everyone. Everyone else is staying out. We're going to go for the undercut. I really hope this works. We've, we've had the overcut work for us in a couple of occasions recently. This time, we've got to pray that the undercut works. We've got some, obviously, some fresh air. Kibitza goes past us there. We're at the back of the grid now in 20th. But we've got clean air. And that means should be getting some fast times in. We're on the rich fuel mix. Hopefully, other cars get held up pitting against each other. And as long as we end up higher than we did, then we know it's worked. So we've just been told to move to mix two. We won't do that just yet, but we are just being told right now that the Stappen is in the pits, as is quite a few cars actually, so we need to make this work. We have to go really fast on this lap, uh, which I don't think we're really going to be doing. We need to make sure we come out in a good position. I can see Verstappen already out of the pits as well, so we've not really made up any time on him, but we are ahead of Sebastian Vettel. We've got the undercut done on him at least. So as things stand right now, track position-wise, we're in... Where are we? We're in third. <laughs> had to think of that now. We're in third because we are ahead of Vettel now through the pits. So if we can stay on a podium position, today will be very successful in my opinion. Obviously, though, we do have 10 laps to go in this race, which is quite a long time to, uh, to last in this race still. Ahead of Vettel. He's only just behind us. He's not like... He's, he's probably within five seconds behind us, and he has got a fast car. He's good around this track. It's obviously his home track as well. 
so it is going to be really hard. He's, he's three seconds behind us, so we've got our work cut out to stay ahead of us. As we come around the final corner, once again, you can see, again, plenty of cars in the pits. We are doing all of them, which is really good, and we are currently back in P4, but Robert Kubica ahead of us hasn't pitted yet. He's on the soft, uh, medium tyres as well, so he started on the medium tyres, so he's going to go quite a long way in this race. Hopefully for us, though, that will play into our advantage because we should be getting DRS. We are getting DRS on this lap on him, which is good. So if we can use that to our advantage, it can help us get ahead of Vettel, and hopefully Kubica will go in before Vettel gets catched up to him and gets DRS, and that will help us out massively as we dive up the inside there, avoiding contact, but we get the move done either way. Oh, we did have a collision with Kibitza there. Um, okay, I might try and edit that bit out so you can stop telling me off in the comment section again for crashing into people. As we cross into sector three then on lap nine, we're currently five and a half seconds down on Verstappen and we're three and a half seconds ahead of Kibitza, who is really doing a stellar job of keeping the Ferrari behind him. He's doing a fantastic job helping us out massively. Thank you very much, Robert Kibitza. I really appreciate that, lad. That's really, in, uh, you know, helping us out quite a bit. I don't think we're going to be catching up to Verstappen, though. What's the delta here to him? This time it's 5.6 seconds. So we're losing, well, that would suggest actually 0 0.1 seconds per sector. So that isn't great if we're being honest with ourselves. But him and Hamilton are fighting at the front, which does help us out a little bit. If they keep fighting, it might hold them up and it might give us a chance to catch up a little bit. But, as you can see, Vettel is now ahead of Robert Kubica. He must have gone to pit this lap, actually. So, Robert Kubica is now there. Vettel's 3.4 seconds behind us. I think it's probably more going to be a case of trying to maintain third place rather than chasing down second and first. Data shows the tyres are OK right now. We anticipate good levels of grip for the next few laps, at least. The gap to the car ahead is 6.4 seconds. OK, well, that's not a good sign. My tyres are OK right now, but they might wear off pretty quickly. So I guess I'm pushing them quite hard. So we need to stop doing that. We are losing time to Verstappen. He said we're 6.4 seconds down on Verstappen. As we cross the line here, we are 6.5 seconds down on Verstappen. So really, we're not going to be overtaking Verstappen or Hamilton anytime soon. It is going to be a case of trying to maintain third. But Vettel is gaining on it. He's within two seconds or three seconds of us now. It might be two seconds. That's all it says on my next delta. I missed that one. Uh, but we need to try and look after the tyres a little better. He is he's 2.1 seconds behind us. He's catching up maybe about half a second a lap right now, which suggests he will catch us up right at the end of the race, which we hate to see, but we need to look after the tyres as well. He's got to look after his tyres, obviously, as well, but his tyres are going to be a lap fresher than ours. This is going to be a real tight end to the race. But right now it's kind of boring. Because it's just me on my own at the moment. And it's really hard to commentate when it's just me on my own. Because it's really <laughs> nothing to talk about. It's just me going around saying, oh, you know, look at this. We we we're losing time to Verstappen. Vettel's catching us. We can't really do anything else other than that until they actually catch up to us or we catch up to them. So really, it's not the most entertaining thing for me to talk about right now. Okay, some information on Viking that they are now to the race. Well, thank you for telling me Raikkonen's out the race. Uh, it doesn't really bother me that much, though. He's not in front of us. I really want... I, I want Verstappen to stay in the race, to be fair. But if Hamilton could crash out the race or have an engine failure, that would be perfect for me. Right, Raikkonen, he's just gone off the track here, I believe. Unless it's just... He's, he's just there off the track. Surely that's a safety car thing. Please. A safety car would be fantastic right now for us. We come across the, uh, the line, though, and Vettel, as predicted on lap 15... Is within half a second. He's got DRS on us. This is now where the battle for third place really, really begins. He's gaining on us. He's going to get the DRS on us down this straight. And quite frankly, I'm not really sure how I defend for another two and a half laps against Vettel. We've got to try and keep the inside line, I believe. He's going round the outside. We push him wide. We get him a slipstream. We've now just got to break later than him, which we... There's wheel banging. There's definite wheel banging there. The collision. <laughs> right, let's just see how bad this was on my part. Uh, this is the thing. I don't mean it. I don't mean to do it. It just happens. I think it's just the very, very competitive side of me. So we do... I mean... Yep. Yep. Uh, that is... <laughs> that is my fault. It's not really affecting him, though, because a lap later, he is right back on our tails again. He's slightly further back, 
but he is catching us, although we have just set a purple sector one. So clearly we're doing something right on this lap. He's not quite caught up to us again. We managed to get ahead of him a little bit on that previous lap, and obviously I set a very fast sector one there, which is good for us. Obviously, we are dropping the fuel weight now. We've got a very light car on our hands. We're actually really close to not having enough fuel for the rest of the race. I'm going to have to drop down to the lean mix and go to go to the real lean mix and save some fuel that way. Oh my god, that was awful. I'm sorry. I'm, I've, this is just a sorry episode, really, isn't it? I'm just having to say sorry constantly. I'm, please forgive me, lads. Please forgive me, as this is really not a stellar showing of how to... Did we get a shunt in the back there? I think we got a... I think Vettel hit us there. I don't know about you, but I just suddenly felt like I went forwards quite a bit. I really think Vettel hit us there. Although I didn't see any red barriers, so maybe he didn't hit us. I don't know. Are we going to get fastest lap? No. But I've just been... Have I got a penalty? What does that mean there? Have I got a penalty? I've not... I've not got a penalty, uh, but I, I do have four warnings. Uh, exceeding track limits twice and two collisions. I don't think I've got a penalty, but I... Th I couldn't say I've got a penalty there, but I did see on the thing the penalty sign. So I might have one. Either way, we are on the last lap now and Vettel is right there. There's really not much I can do. He's got past us and there's really nothing I can do. We're right in the slipstream. Can we get him in the braking zone as we... Go around the outside. Go around the inside. Ah, oh, it's not really worked around the switcheroo. We're going to have to break really late into the next corner. We've got better traction. We've got the speed. We've nearly got the racing line to go around. Yeah, oh, we've hit him. We've. I mean, that was my fault completely, as every collision has been so far this race. Ah, oh, we're going to drop. This is probably justified. I won't lie to you. Me dropping down to fourth right now is probably justified. We'll, we'll do a bit of late braking, obviously, to try and sort Vettel out but he has he's he's drove he's driven very well he should have got the overtake done a few laps ago but I crashed into him Hamilton wins the race we just drop off the podiums it's oh, I forgot to I forgot to change down my fuel mix as well so now we've run out of fuel to cross the line so actually it's a good job Vettel did get his overtaken get the overtake on us otherwise he would have run out of fuel and he would have overtaken us then anyway so really he would have overtaken us whatever happened fourth place we'll take it we'll take the 12 points that come with it as well but we are losing ground to Hamilton we have made ground though on Charles Leclerc who obviously lost part of his front wing on the opening lap but who wasn't our fault wasn't actually our fault so we can actually claim that we haven't caused someone to have a bed race which is good he drops down to eighth what does this mean for the standings then it means we are closer to Charles Leclerc but we are now 47 points away from Hamilton which is nearly two race wins away we need to get some really good races under our belt, improve under the improved AI as well. We need to get better as well and really hope in the second half of the season we can really get some good results under our belts. Constructors-wise, it brings us closer to Ferrari, but we are still 78 points away from Mercedes, which is a long way to go. It's looking even more unlikely now that we'll win the Constructors, but... We still have a chance with the drivers. We just have to rely on some really good luck and good results on us. So heading into the next race, we've got 1,300 research points to spend. We're going to go for our failed engine upgrade, obviously, because we need to get that done. That's going to take a week. So that should be here for the Belgian Grand Prix. We're working on the chassis as well. So the only upgrades we can do are aerodynamics-wise. And can we afford any of them? We can't. We've got 989 points to spend, but these all cost over 1,000. So we can't afford any of these. We'll just have to wait on the engine and chassis upgrades for the next race. The next race is in Hungary, which is the final one of these run of five or six races in a row where I think I'm really good at. You can see from Canada through to Hungary, they're the races that I'm really good at. Three wins and two fourth places is pretty good going. If we can get another wing in Hungary, that would be great before we head into the, the Belgian Grand Prix, Italian Grand Prix. I'm kind of okay at those ones, but as we head to the later stages of the season, that's when in my ability at least, that's when it gets worse for me. I'm not quite as good at those races. So we need to get some points on the board in Hungary, probably Belgium and Italy as well, before it all starts to go downhill at the end of the season. As for the engine, well, considering that I just know that I'm not very good at some of these races, I feel like I should make some upgrades now and take some penalties later on in the season. So the internal combustion engine, we're going to replace that definitely. MGUH... How's that? That's looking at 62% wear. Do I replace that as well? To be fair, I may as well replace it all and just take some big penalties all at the same time towards the end of the season. 
and start at the back of the grid. So I think that's what I'll do. We're going to just replace all these parts. We'll take some big penalties at the end of the season. But it's it'll be worth it, hopefully, because if we get a good engine, we can get some good qualifying times and some good race times, and that should be okay. We'll replace some of these later on in the season as well. But these turbocharger, MGUH, and the internal combustion engine, the ICE, we need to be changing those as well. So that's what we're going to do for next race. So thank you very much for watching this Grand Prix. I hope you've enjoyed it, even though I have been crashing and cutting corners. Hopefully, I won't do any of that in Hungary. So I'll see you then. Have a good one. Goodbye.